Hello and welcome to iBlue Air JGR Gaming for Comedy. This is Uncut XCOM 2 Alien Hunters. The first soldier we're going to take a look at is Lana Rodriguez. Born into a life of drugs and crime, Lana Rodriguez is no stranger to hard living. While not much is known about her personal exploits, the syndicate she belonged to was known for being ruthless and unforgiving, favoring capital punishment for unpaid dues rather than broken bones. We are currently unsure why Lana Rodriguez was so eager to join XCOM. Now, let's hope I don't get her killed in the first mission. Alright, here we go. It's time to answer the call from the council. What's going on, guys? It's a new playthrough of XCOM 2. And because it's a new playthrough, we've got to do things differently. We've got to do things better than we did the last time. Because that is what I Blue Air JGR Game for Comedy is all about. I'm not always going to do post-game commentaries like I'm doing right now. Normally it's going to be... As I'm playing the game, I'm going to talk through it, but because things are so different this time around, I'm going to talk through it, I'm going to explain to you what's going to be different this time, what's going to be new and improved. So, at the start of every mission, I'm going to go through and I'm going to talk about the squad composition that I'm bringing on each mission. I don't know how I didn't think to do that the first time I played through this game. Actually, I do know how it's because I'm a moron, alright? So, the first time I played through the game, I wasn't smart enough to clearly detail out what soldiers I'm bringing on every mission and why. So as soon as all these troops get selected, I'm going to explain that right now. So even if you don't play XCOM, you'll have a slightly better idea as to what's going on. Okay, here we go. Gotta pick one more soldier because we have six in our squad. What's it going to be? I'm not sure. Am I stalling for time? Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Okay, now let's talk about it. We're coming into this mission with three rookies. Those are the basic, untrained XCOM soldiers. There's nothing special about them. They're guys with guns. But we do have a sharpshooter, which is XCOM's answer to the sniper. A ranger, which is a close-range combatant with a sword. Mine is using an SMG. Uh, and last but certainly not least, the grenadier. That's like the heavy ordnance specialist. They get a grenade launcher and a light machine gun. It's very powerful stuff. So, let's get into this mission. But before we actually get to the mission we have to listen to central brief us on the mission details advent is holding a vip of some importance to the resistance movement and the spokesman has asked that we intercept the transport vehicle and rescue the target we'll have to take out any hostile forces protecting the package to secure the area okay so here we go we've got a pretty simple mission on our hands we've got to get to the vip and we've got to get him to the extraction point we've got to get all of our soldiers out hopefully get all of our soldiers out you know we might lose somebody and that's it that's that's going to be the mission so we're starting off in concealment that means the enemy does not know where we are but as soon as we engage with a single enemy pod all of the other pods of enemies are going to be alerted because i have the all pods active mod installed if you'd like to install that mod for your own playthrough check out the steam workshop that is like product placement only it's for free stuff Okay, but so it, here's the real here's the real situation. Why are so many things different from the way they were in the first XCOM 2 playthrough that we did on I Blue Air JGR Game for Comedy? Well, there's there's very important reason for that, and the reason is because I am still the exact same jackass that I was yesterday. And what do I mean by that? I'm always going to be the same. I'm always going to be doing the same type of nonsense. I'm always going to be telling goofy stories about, you know, the summertime and, and, and women and, and rooftop bars and whatever other nonsense I feel like talking about on any given day. But what I can do is I can make that nonsense more enjoyable and, and more entertaining to watch. And how do I plan on doing that? By improving the production value. Just adding just little things that make the quality a little bit better visually, uh, 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 audibly, just, just I would, everything just a little bit better than it was before. So I'd, I'd, I'd want the stuff that comes out on iBlue Air, JGR Game for Comedy, to be entertaining regardless of what game it is, right? So let's say you don't play XCOM. Chances are you probably haven't even made it this far in the video, but if you have, good for you because you're in for a freaking surprise, okay? Uh, the surprise 
is that I'm actually going to make a concerted effort to explain the different mechanics of the game. I feel like I didn't do that well the first time I did a playthrough of this. And once again, it's because I'm a freaking moron. Like, there's no, there's no denying the fact that I am a complete and utter moron. And the reason I say that is, you know, you're probably thinking, oh, no, Rob, you're, you're not an idiot. Come on. But the only reason you have to say that is because I'm an idiot. You know what I'm saying? It's like you don't have to tell smart people, oh, you're, you're not stupid. It's because they already know. But so, so, look, I'm saying I know I'm stupid. And I, I know that there are definitely a lot of things in the previous playthroughs, uh, not just for XCOM, but just in general, that uh, just weren't done uh, exactly the way they should have been done. So, you know, here we go. We're trying it again, and hopefully, we, you know, broaden the audience, get more people involved, people that don't even like XCOM. You know, so if, if you're... If you got into I Blue Air JGR game for comedy because of Battleborn, which I know a lot of people did, and now you're probably thinking, oh, what the hell, he's not doing Battleborn videos anymore? Look, it's hard. There's only like 10 people playing the game now. It's crazy. Um, but fear not. You know, th th there's still enjoyment to be had. There's still going to be... There's still going to be me, right? Hey, you know, maybe I'm being a little bit uh, arrogant thinking that you want to watch these videos because of me, but... Hey, I'm not that bad. Okay, so let's let's talk about the game right now. What what is going on in this instance right now? I'm trying to get all my troops into position for an ambush, right? And what how are we going to ambush them? Well, like I said before, we started this mission in concealment, and what that means is so the enemy does not know exactly where we are at the moment. So if I get my troops set in a proper position, I can put them all on Overwatch, and then I will activate the enemy pod by taking a shot right at their freaking heads. Okay, so that's what we're doing right now. We're putting everybody on Overwatch, preparing for the ambush, and then as soon as I take a shot, I believe I'm going to do so with a sniper, Lana Rodriguez, and then once I take that shot, the pod is going to like run for cover. They'll be like, whoa, somebody's shooting at us, bro. And they're going to run, and then all the Overwatch shots are going to trigger. Overwatch is an action that triggers when an enemy crosses a certain line of sight for a unit. So there we go. Look at that. We hit that man right in the back. He's not a man. He's an alien. So we hit him in the back, and now the action is getting started. The squad has been revealed. This pod is like, yo, we got to move. And they're going to start moving, and the Overwatch shots are going to come out. So there we go. We eliminated... One of the units was a Sectoid, the other unit was an Advent Trooper, just a very basic unit. Boom, he's done. There is a plane overhead, but that's fine. That is a turret. That's very scary. I don't like turrets. Turrets, got to get rid of that as quickly as possible. And then here we go. It's the alien's turn, so now all the other pods on the map are going to activate. We've got another Sectoid. I like to call it the Necromancer because it likes to raise the dead. Taking a shot right in the chest, but I'm going to miss another shot, blah, blah, blah. All this crazy stuff is happening, but you're seeing the power of the ambush. Whoa. And if you're wondering if I'm going to uh, shout cast it like this when I record it uh, and, and do the live commentary, I'll do my best. But it's going to be a little bit more goofy, a little bit more free ball, if you know what I'm saying. I'm talking about going commando. And there we go. The turret's going to take a shot and it's going to miss, so that's always good. Oh, my goodness. So there you go. So that th th this is going to be the new flow for XCOM 2. This is going to be the new style for playthroughs. It's going to be a little bit more polished because it's all about improvement. You know what I'm saying? It's all about getting better with, you know, every, with every single video. It's a learning experience. So always got to try and make it better than the last time. And, you know, let me know in the comments if it is actually better than the last time. Like, I know it is, but, you know, communication. I try and respond to every single comment. Well, not every comment. I'm not gonna lie. I some comments I read them and I just don't reply. But I respond to most of the comments that get left on videos. So if you comment and you know if you watch the first playthrough and you're watching this one and you're like, whoa, this is a million freaking times better, then say so so I can smile and go to bed happy. You know, because that's what we all need. We all need stuff that helps us sleep at night. And getting positive comments from strangers on YouTube is how I sleep at night i gotta tell you it's so hard to sleep after getting a bad comment okay but so far in the, in the mission things are going pretty well throwing a bunch of grenades grenades in the early game are your friend even in the late game they're very helpful but in the early game they're even more helpful because uh low level soldiers have pretty bad accuracy 
uh, but that, it's no big deal. Uh, speaking of uh, pretty bad accuracy, I did cheat a little bit uh, for this mission. And what do I mean by that? I use the console commands. This game is PC only for the time being. It comes out uh, for consoles in September, but on PC you can activate the console commands, tweak the settings a little bit, and then you can spawn in uh, various items and things. And I spawned in a bunch of level one or tier one scopes and expanded magazines and things like that. And the reason why I did that is because this play, uh, the, the all pods active mod is ridiculous it's co insane it gets right now it, it looks like it's easy i'm not gonna lie to you it looks like it's easy because i'm just lobbing grenades all over the place I'm not even I'm setting up really good overwatch ambushes and i'm doing a great job look at that turret's gone didn't even kill nobody it's perfect but when there's more enemies on the field when you got 10 and 12 enemies on the field that extra 5% accuracy is going to mean the world. It's going to completely... It's going to be necessary. So just little things like that. I'm going to cheat just a little bit. But only as much as necessary. Because I'm, I'm going to say it again. I tried to do the all pods active thing just in a personal place. I was just playing for fun. And it was hard as fuck. All right. Excuse my French, but it was hard as fuck. So here we go. We actually got an interesting situation that is sort of coming up right here. I'm not in range to use my melee attack from my ranger to get to that guy, which would have been pretty close to a guaranteed kill. But what I can do is I can lob. He's taking cover behind a car, which is uh, XCOM 101. Try to never stand behind cars because they blow up. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lob a grenade at it and I'm going to try and blow it up. And hopefully... It blows up in from one grenade. Wink, wink. Spoiler alert. It's not going to blow up from just one grenade. And it's really unfortunate that I actually can't reach him with the grenade. There's a limit on how far I can throw it. And I can't actually get him hurt by the grenade. But I can at least damage the car. And I do have another grenade on, on one of my soldiers. So I can't actually blow it up. So it does take two grenades to blow it up. Or I think the higher tier of grenade will blow it up in one one shot uh the plasma grenades but those don't come for a long time so we don't even need to worry about that it's not even it's a non-issue but what isn't a non-issue outside my building somewhere in my neighborhood actually is a mr softy van and i'm very curious to know if you can actually hear the mr softy jingle that is being played right now because i can and i've been listening to it for some time now the, the summer i swear to you the summer in my neighborhood is the worst all right there's a, I, i'm across the street from a park that's number one live right next to a police station if you've seen these videos before you already know that also very close to a fire station hold on that car is about to blow up boom done took a lot of damage he's gonna get murked as soon as i get another shot on but so park police station fire station and in the summertime mr softy in addition to that, in the park in the summer, ridiculous, ridiculous. Everybody and their freaking mothers, you know, no, everybody and their fucking mothers goes to that park and they blast music all freaking night and it gets on my damn nerves, okay? Because it's just loud and it's never anything that I want to listen to. You know, I wish I could just go down to the park sometimes late at night and bring them a mixtape and be like, guys, if you're gonna play uh, Daddy Yankee at two o'clock in the morning first of all don't play daddy yankee at two o'clock in the morning second of all put on this mixtape put on some of the crappy music that i listen to so that i can sleep a little better okay but now that we've actually cleared out all of the enemies on the map pretty efficiently we just have to move kind of move everybody we have a lot of turns left over as well we just have to have to kind of move everybody uh into a better position and then open up this door which we have to hack into which is nothing really special it's just kind of a it's not really a mini game it's just click the button open up the hack and you get a percentage to do x y or z boom gonna open the door then we get the vip secured and then we got to get them to the extraction point and that's pretty much it then the mission is going to come to an end or is it are there going to be any more twists and turns is there going to be more excitement to had is advent going to call reinforcements maybe i don't know budget cuts are a thing so i don't know okay so we got this guy i think it's actually a scientist that we're rescuing which is why they're wearing a lab coat uh but it's kind of there's little things about XCOM, 
You got to use your imagination, right? The scientist is standing in the back of a truck. He's not even handcuffed or anything. He's just kind of chilling there. Uh, but, you know, who who really wants to be bothered animating a, a chair and handcuffs for this guy that's going to be gone two seconds later? You know? Who cares? Because the developers, developers got a lot on their, their plates already, so I'm not going to worry about them breaking my immersion because the scientist isn't handcuffed to a chair you know it's not the end of the world it's not the end of the world so as of right now we are making our way to the extraction point we don't have the ability to reach it in just one turn and it doesn't look like uh advent wants us to leave they are going to call in some reinforcements so that's going to be unfortunate it does take reinforcements one turn before they arrive so it might be, can we actually get out? No, we can't get out. So if it was possible to get the scientist, the VIP, all the way to the extraction point in that one turn, I would have done so because he is an incredibly vulnerable unit. He can actually get killed. I've never had a VIP get shot by Advent, but, you know, that's, just, that's probably just luck. So if you play XCOM, have you ever had a VIP get shot by Advent? That's the real question. So, but a cool thing is when Advent calls reinforcements, if you're in a good position, you can set up an ambush. Because once they fly in and once they land, they're going to run to cover. It's called scampering. So they're going to scamper into cover. So ideally, all of these Overwatch shots are going to trigger and just completely wipe out this new pod that comes down from the advent troop carrier so here we go let's well, look at that cutscene look at that thing just kind of materialized from the distance and shit that's draw distance for you right so here we go what is the pod looks like it's a captain and two troopers this is like the second mission so it's not really a big deal pod it's don't get don't get it twisted though they can kill people they can definitely very easily eliminate people you know, if they get a good flank going on. But here we go. Getting that reaction shot. Here we go. One, two, three. Are they going to trigger anymore? Yes, they are going to trigger. Okay. Whoa, boop, 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 boop. Camera went a little bit crazy. But we did kill one of them. Damaged another. So that's decent. It's decent. So in an ideal world, we'll be able to finish them off right now. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to use the Ranger to get that slash. Chopping them up. Cutting those ankles off. Cutting those... Cutting that midriff. Cutting that midriff is a very vulnerable area. So we've chopped him up, so now we just have to deal with one more guy. And look at that, a promotion. We got promotions to give out. Boom. This is so much, it's so exciting. I love, I love XCOM. I really love XCOM. I get excited whenever I play this game. So we're going to move to flank this guy and hopefully just take a shot and straight up eliminate him. Not the greatest percentage in the world, but he is just a rookie, so not too mad at him. But come on, guy. You obviously had some combat training, so that is inexcusable. So we've got to move another soldier into position. Uh, I'm going to change the names of some soldiers eventually. But we are going to introduce a new soldier. One soldier per mission. One soldier per episode. And that's going to be like the, the official name for that new soldier. So Lana Rodriguez is the official. Her name is not going to change. She's not going to change. She is officially Lana Rodriguez. And she's going to be Lana Rodriguez forever. In the next episode, we're going to introduce a new soldier with a new backstory. Just to get a little bit more invested so you guys can be equally as upset as I am whenever a soldier dies. Because it's very, it's very heart-wrenching in the XCOM when... When somebody dies, especially somebody that you've given a backstory that you've invested any amount of time into. It doesn't matter. If you spent two seconds in the customization, like, hey, I'm going to give this guy a beanie hat. Then if he gets shot, it's like, fuck. I gave him a fucking beanie hat, man. And he's just going to go and get shot. He's going to, you know, or if he panics, it's like, damn it. I gave him a beanie hat. What the hell is he panicking for? Piece of crap rookies. You know, but it, it, those, just the little things like that make XCOM a great game. Why am I stroking this game's EP so much? I don't know. Maybe it's because I like it so much. Who knows? But I feel like XCOM, while it did, XCOM Enemy Unknown, the first XCOM game, the first new XCOM, did actually win Game of the Year, so I guess the EP has been stroked for that. But XCOM 2, it's got, it's generally well received, but... It could always use a little bit more stroking. It's not like Overwatch, that game gets stroked 
far too much. But we'll talk about that on another day because this is coming to an end. We got flawless. We killed all the aliens. We rescued everybody. Nobody took a single point of damage. That's freaking awesome. I think Mr. Softy's getting louder outside my window. Maybe I should go out and get some ice cream. That's a good way to end this series, right? With a nice cone of soft-served ice cream. So, the name of this series is Uncut XCOM 2 Alien Hunters. The name of the channel is iBlueAir JGR Gaming for Comedy. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.